Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And for once, let's start with some non-Gundam model kits. Because one of the most exciting announcements so far from the Bandai Hobby New Item Info was the announcement of 30-minute missions armored core kits. And it looks like they're going to be a banger value. For 3,850 yen, 25 US, there is the Nightfall. It has the Shade Eye Head with parts to recreate how it looks during Assault Boosts, the Orbiter Body, Tool Arm Arms, Crawler Legs, and P10 Boosters. And then for weapons, it comes rocking with the Scudder Assault Rifle, Ash Meat Pile Bunker, which can parts form between stored and deployed state, the P-32 Duo-03 Missile Launcher, which unfortunately isn't seen opening in the promotional images, and the Songbird's Grenade Cannon. The voice inside my head is telling me to buy this. Or for the same price, you can go for the fan-favorite Steel Haze. It consists entirely of knocked wire parts, the Alula 21E boosters, the Sampu Burst handgun, the VVC 774LS laser slicer, which comes in both inactive and active modes, the VVC 703PM plasma missile launcher, and the Ransetsu RF burst rifle. You're going to buy this one, right buddy? And for even more firepower, you can either hook up the 30-minute missions weapons to them, because they do have compatible holes on the forearms and on the racks on the back, or you can buy the first weapon set for 1,650 N 11 US, which comes with the VP66LR laser rifle, the VVC-70 VPM Vertical Plasma Missile Launcher, which has parts for being either left-mounted or right-mounted, the VVC-700LD Laser Drone, and VP-67LD Laser Dagger, which comes with parts for stored and deployed states. And if you still weren't convinced, they explicitly mention that you will be able to combine parts from different ACs, just like you can in the game. And this is then something that like gives me the feeling that they're going to be making a bunch of these. Maybe even enough to recreate your own in-game AC. From Gundam then, things haven't been quite so exciting so far. Um, with the biggest announcement here being two high grades from Gundam Requiem for Vengeance, the Zaku 2 Solari and the Gundam Twitter. I mean Gundam X, written as EX, you know, to differentiate it from the other Gundam X. We don't have a lot of written details yet, um, like the prize is to be announced and the release date is simply given as Fall 2024, but the images do already give us a good idea of what to expect. The detailing for both of them is simply amazing, and it is definitely on par or even better than what we've seen with the Origin, and we also get some very good color separation. Meaning, of course, that both of them are going to be pretty pricey model kits and will easily be over 2,000 yen. Um, what will keep me from buying these, though, isn't going to be that expensive price tag, but might just be the reason that other people will absolutely love these. The proportions. The Zaku's chest feels massive compared to the skirt armor, the shoulders are equally massive, and the arms feel weirdly long, which is also the case with the Gundam X. But at the very least, they are definitely different feeling designs from what we're used to. And if you like that Gundam X, well, they also announced that it will get a Gundam Universe figure, with more details being released on the 23rd. And the final new announcements then came from Gundam Build Metaverse. And let's say that these announcements were about as boring as the series itself. Now, it is 
good news, but somewhat boring nonetheless, um, because both of them are actually just remolds. For 2750N, 18 US, there is the high-grade Gundam Amazing Barbs Loops, which is the same as the special coding version, which was bundled with the Lincoln Planet CD, but now just a normal version. And for 2200N, 15 US, there's the Gundam 00 Command Quanta Desert Type, which is very simply a color variation of the standard 00 Gundam Quanta. So... The only real thing I can say here is that I'm actually shocked that neither of these kits is premium Bandai Limited, considering, you know, how gung-ho Bandai has been these past few years with making variant kits as premium Bandais, or, you know, even kits that should have been normal releases, premium Bandai. Um, so yeah, let's hope that they kept the best for tomorrow which is the final day of that hobby new item info thing they've got going on. If it's awesome, I will immediately make a video on it, but if it turns out to be a giant nothing burger, I'll simply cover it um, next week with Gundam News. So again, let's hope I see you tomorrow. And from the model kit news, we go to the figure news, with the main new thing being the premium Bandai Limited Robot Spirit Slaughter Dagger version anime. And while 12,100 yen, 80 US, is no small price to pay, especially considering the fact that you also got to add the premium Bandai tax to that, it does come with a lot of really cool stuff. It has its own beam rifle, the beam rifle from the regular dagger, a beam effect part for those beam rifles, four beam sabers, two regular beam saber blade effect parts, one slashing beam saber blade effect part, four thrust parts, um, four thrust effect parts for the ail striker pack, and one firing effect part for the foot mounted anti-infantry guns. Or more accurately, the anti-civilian guns. Especially civilians who let's say, had their genes altered a little bit. Uh, yeah, this thing wasn't called the Slaughter Dagger for no reason. Pre-orders in Japan will start on the 22nd, and it'll be ready to commit some war crimes in September. And continuing with Japanese Premium Bandai, they're also getting a special 15th anniversary restock of the Gundam Fix Figuration Metal Composite Wing Gundam Snow White Prelude from Gundam Wing Frozen Teardrop. The figure is identical to the 2020 original, minus the price, and in order to buy it, you have to enter a lottery. So not to win it, but to buy it. So this thing is going to be really, really limited. Not limited then is Mobile Suit Ensemble 27. It is currently available for pre-order on Bandai's online Gachapon store, but it will become available in physical Gachapon machines across Japan at a later date. For 500 yen a spin, 3 US, you can get the Rising Freedom Gundam, Rising Freedom Gundam Expansion Set, Schwarzed, Zagok from the original series, and a weapon set with a little bit for everyone. So if you want to have the full Rising Freedom, you're going to have to need at least three pulls. And talking about the Rising Freedom Gundam, Gundam Seed Freedom has managed to earn over 4 billion yen in box office revenue alone, which is over 26,350,000 US dollars. And to put that in perspective, the first Hathaway's Flash movie only earned 2.2 billion yen in its entire lifetime. So there's a good chance that Gundam Freedom, uh, Gundam Seed Freedom, will earn over double of that. And for the people who go watch the movie this week in Japan, they'll get a random ID card featuring Kira, Lacus, Shin, Athran, or Kigali. And this might be somewhat of a minor nitpick, but I noticed that in addition to their date of birth, it also says their literal 
age on it, which is not something you would usually find on an ID card because that means that you would have to like get a new one every time you have a birthday. Uh, but anyways, we of course also have some new Gundam Seed Freedom merchandise to go over. For 9,900 yen, 65 US for the full set, these mochi mochi like sausage-esque Gundam Seed Freedom plushies went up for pre-order. There's Kira, Lacus, Atherin, Kigali, Shin, Lunamaria, Isaac, Diarca, and Orphe. And while it is a regular release, if you get the set from P Bandai, you'll also get Shura. And the set is slated for an August release. In collaboration with Sanrio then, a whole slew of items went up for pre-order. Each main character got linked up with a famous Sanrio character, and over at Fruvi, you could then get a whole bunch of different items with those designs. From Witch from Mercury then, we got to see the inner designs of the Witch from Mercury School Assembly Blu-ray set, and they announced that from March 29th, pop-up stores will be popping up at Tsutayas across Japan. There's mega acrylic stands for 3,850 yen, 25 US, standard acrylic stands for 1,870 yen, 12 US, and an acrylic diorama for 5,500 yen, 36 US, all featuring newly drawn illustrations of Soleta, Mirine, and the Ariel. And for 715 yen a pop, around 5 US, you can get an acrylic card with those new illustrations or screenshots from the anime. Plus, for every 2,200 yen you spend, 15 US, you'll get a random postcard. On the gaming front then, in Gundam Battle Operation 2 for the PlayStation, the Gira Doga Saikomu test type has joined the fray. In UCN Gage, the UR Shiro Amada and UR Gundam Easy 8 have become available as unit assemblies, something that is perfectly timed with the Apsaurus 2 raid battle, where you can get SR Norris Packard pieces and coins. The Gundam Metaverse beta went live again, to very little fanfare, unsurprisingly, especially when you compare it to the Gundam Breaker 4 network test, which also went live last week. Now, it was only for Japanese accounts, but since anyone anywhere can make a Japanese account, it wasn't actually that region locked. But since I didn't get in, I can't really give you a like good impression of it, so instead I'm gonna direct you to new type Sage's video, which I'll have linked on screen and down below. And in other news, Gundam will be appearing as part of the Bandai Namco booth at Anime Japan 2024, held on the 23rd and 24th. A new Gachapon store has opened up in the Shin Aomori Aeon Cinema, and the Gachapon Expo 2024 will be held at Ikebukuro Sunshine City from the 27th to the 31st. As for the things you could get this week then, on the 15th, the Gundam Seed X Cup no Fuchiko Ichiban Kuji was released. One ticket will cost you 800 yen, 5 US, and will get you one of the following prizes. The top prize is Fuchiko in Flace uniform hanging from the Freedom Gundam's head. Prizes B through D are Kira, Atherin, and Lacus cup hanging figures with a facial expression that is inspired by Fuchiko herself. Then prize E is a Freedom, Justice, or Haro glass that you can hang him from. Prize F is a hand towel featuring the Freedom, Justice, Strike, Aegis, Busser, Duel, Blitz, Providence, Strike, Rouge, Archangel, and Eternal. With Fuchiko sitting on them or hanging from them in the style of the pilot slash captain of that machine. Prize G is a framed picture of those images, and Prize H is an acrylic chain, again, with those images. And if you then get the final ticket, you'll get a pearl-coated version of the first prize. And from the 18th, you could again test your luck with this new Gachapon offering. Capsule Action Shars Zaku 2. This deluxe Gachapon goes for 1,500 yen a spin, 10 US, and there are two possible color variants, standard and clear. On the 20th then, you could get some new music. 
from Gundam Seed Freedom, there was the Gundam Seed Freedom original soundtrack analog version. The set goes for 13,200 yen, 87 US, and consists of three LPs, new cover artwork, and a booklet containing some interviews. And from Gundam Build Metaverse, there was Lincoln Planet's debut CD, Days of Birth. It contains the ending theme from Gundam Build Metaverse, Days of Birth, the ending team for Mass Production Type Rico, Part to Part, the official supporter song for the Shizuoka City Plastic Modeling Project, Teto Te, and Happy Linkel Planet. You can get it as a regular version for 1,800 yen, 12 US, a limited edition with Blu ray for 3,000 yen, 20 US, and then a more deluxe limited edition that comes with a Blu ray. And of course, the metallic high grade Gundam Amazing Barbs Loops for 5,500 yen, 36 US. And then finally, slated for a late March release, were the Mega Cat Project Soleta and Mirri name, going for 4,108 yen a pop, 28 US, and the Cosmo Fleet Special Nail Argama RE, which goes for 9,350 yen, 62 US and comes with a new weather paint job, water slide decals, a stand, and seven in-scale mobile suits. One unicorn, three Jagans, and three Rizals. For this week's reading material then, there was the Gundam Seed Freedom Character Archive for 2750 yen, 18 US, which of course includes a lot of character profiles, but also a lot of never seen before setting material, and interviews with both the cast and the staff who worked on the movie. And then there was the 19th chapter of the Spare Memory Gundam sequel, linked down below. On to the apparel news then, where Strict G kicked things off last week Friday with three new collaborations. First, they teamed up with Kinto to create Gundam Seed Freedom inspired water bottles. They're made out of powder coated stainless steel, and for 6,600 yen a piece, 44 US, you can get a white compass one or a black foundation one. Then, together with Shin Zaburo Ichizawa Hampu, they created canvas toad bags inspired by Shark's Counterattack and Hathaway's Flash, meaning that for 13,750 yen, 91 US, you can get a gray Omro themed one, a black Neo Zeon themed one or a Navy Mafti themed one. And then finally, they collaborated with Kushitani for a collection of Gundam and Char inspired off-road items. There's off-road gloves for 14,080 yen, 93 US, off-road jerseys for 15,400 yen, 101 US, off-road pants for 29,700 yen, 196 US, track jackets for 24,200 yen, 160 US, Kittle t-shirts for 13,750 yen, 91 US, Flow t-shirts for 6,380 yen, 42 US, a red Comet backpack for 31,900 yen, 211 US, a red Comet waist bag for 16,500 yen, 109 US, and a Gundam key case for 9,350 yen, 62 US. And all of these Strict G items are currently up for pre-order with an April release, which is also when they'll become available in physical stores. From Bankore then, we're getting more acrylic stands. This time featuring the main cast from Gundam 0083. You can get them as a standard version for 1,320 yen, around 9 US, or a big version for 2,750 yen, around 18 US. And the available characters are Ko, Pilot Suit Ko, Nina, Keith, Maura, Burning, Gato, Pilot Suit Gato, Shima, Pilot Suit Shima, and The Laws. And all of these are slated for a May release. And then finally, from the Gundam Factory Yokohama collaboration with the Yokohama Denna Bay Stars, we've got some more items featuring their mascot dressed up as the RX 78F00 Gundam. But what really caught my attention this time is that they're now also selling Gundam themed baseball equipment a helmet for righties or lefties for 50,000 yen, 331 US 
and a glove only for righties for 95,000 yen, 628 US. All of which are available through the Base Stars' online store, which I will have linked down below, but I am pretty certain you're going to need a proxy buying service to buy from them. But if you do manage to get them, you'll be able to play baseball in Gundam approved fashion. And as always, let's quickly wrap things up with the polls. With the figureized standard Avatar Fumina being released on the 23rd, Gundam.info wanted to know which Fumina our favorite is. And with 39.7%, the OG Super Fumina won with a pretty comfortable lead. It's just a shame that the face of her model kit was nowhere near as cute as the line art and that it would be used for future model kits as well. So yeah, fortunately, Bandai has come a long way since those dark times. Second place then went to winning Fumina, who did not win with 26.8%. Super Fumina Titans Mate version was third with 20.2% and Command Fumina was still able to command a respectable 13.3% of the votes. As for the ongoing poll then, with April Fools rapidly approaching, Gundam.info wants to know which Gundam character we think would be the easiest to fool. Beecha from Double Zeta Gundam, Michelle or Michelle, I think it was pronounced in the anime. It's been a long time since I've watched um, the English dub from the 08 The Mess team. Shin from Gundam Sea Destiny or Shino from Iron Blooded Orphans. And both Gundam.info and Twitter are in complete agreement for once. Bicha, Michelle and Shino are roughly equal but don't have a lot of votes at all with almost all of the votes going for Shin. Like, man, do you remember that epic prank they pulled on him during Gundam Seed? <laughs> it's funny because they're dead. Heck, it was so hilarious, they tried it again with Stella, and he fell for it again. Can you believe this guy? <gasps> but like, the best prank they ever pulled on Shen was making him believe that he was the main character of Gundam Seed. Destiny. Oh man, I voted for Michelle. And if you want to cast your vote, I'll of course have the links down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll probably see all of you again tomorrow with more Gumpla news.